In a shocking turn, the Ocean Gate co-founder now says he wants to pivot and put humans on Venus in face of the Titan implosion. He basically wants to create a Venus human sky base. This is actually something that people have been talking about for years with Venus and the surface of it being extremely hot, but when you get into its atmosphere, it could potentially be livable. It is kind of strange. You would think Mars, which is right next to us and actually has a surface that we could theoretically live on, you'd think that'd be the easier option. You've got Elon Musk coming out saying by 2050, he wants people on there. I think he said a million people. Not sure how possible that is, but I just wanted to discuss the whole Ocean Gate thing. Obviously, the news has really died down in relation to it. Not surprising. We'll have to see what happens when it comes to the potential lawsuits, the investigation. People still expect it to be the carbon fiber haul, the size of it. You know, they had to use the carbon fiber haul just to fit more people into it. And that ended up contributing to its demise. But let's get to this article. Ocean Gate surviving co-founder said he wants to put humans in a colony on Venus by the year 2050. He told this to Business Insider and he sees humans living in the atmosphere of the second planet from the sun and has a business venture to pursue the goal. So originally they were focusing on deep sea exploration, going down to the Titanic, really deep depths. Now after that whole debacle, he shifted his focus and he has said this in the face of the recent Titan disaster which has drawn international scrutiny to his former company's lax safety practices and causing OceanGate to suspend all commercial and exploration operations. And yeah, I mean, they had to suspend it because they did not have a submersible that could go down that deep. They still technically do have a submersible, uh, the Cyclops, but I think we can all agree that this is it for Ocean Gate. There's just no coming back from something, you know, where, I mean, Ocean Gate was trending on Twitter for several weeks, almost felt like it was three or four weeks it was trending from mid-June to early July. By 2050, he would like to see 1,000 humans living on the clouds of Venus, He told the insider that he wanted to make humanity a multi-planet species since he was 11. This seems like a discount version of Elon Musk to me. No disrespect, but I mean, come on. He says that his plan is more realistic than putting a million people on Mars by 2050, and that is Musk's plan. Venus is the warmest planet in the solar system. Its atmosphere is full of carbon dioxide. Its surface temperature could melt lead and acid routinely rains down from its clouds. Its atmosphere pressure is crushing more than 90 times that of Earth, according to NASA. And speaking of NASA, this was an idea that NASA was involved with putting people not on Venus's surface, I don't know if anyone's seen that photo when the Russians sent a a little robot to the surface and it actually did take a photograph of Venus's surface and then it burnt up very quickly because it's just impossible. We would have to create some type of crazy robot that could deflect heat to actually be able to go on and explore it. If a space station could be designed to withstand the acid in the clouds, Hundreds of thousands of people could someday live in the Venus atmosphere. Humanity must push the limits of innovation, he believes, despite the Titan tragedy. And he says, forget Ocean Gate, forget Titan, forget Stockton. Humanity could be on the verge of a big breakthrough and not take advantage of it because we as a species are going to get shut down and pushed back to the status quo. Yeah, I'm not really understanding what he's saying there. So I guess he's saying the Titan incident is going to affect space travel. When in reality, I mean, space travel, it's like we don't have the technology to really do it. That's why... I do think there's going to be another, maybe a 2.0 version of the space race, but it's going to be different to where all the different countries are going to be competing. It's not just going to be one versus one, USA versus the Soviet Union. It's going to be all the countries competing, and then we will go through a decade, I think probably the 2060s, where we are obsessed with space, like so obsessed once we create new technology. Right now, we just don't have it. 
And then this whole thing with Venus, it, it's a strange fixation. You have to wonder, is this because it, it's almost like it's Elon Musk's own plan that he's going to get a million people on Mars by 2050, so other rich people have to come out and say their plans? No, we're going to the Venus atmosphere. We're building a cloud base. Again, this is not a new idea. This has actually been floated, you know, the past few decades because of the atmosphere of Venus, and there are some interesting renderings you can take a look at there. The problem with Venus is that the surface is too far below the one Earth atmosphere level. Uh, according to a NASA scientist, the atmosphere of Venus is the most Earth-like environment in the solar system, some 50 kilometers above the surface. Venus is surprisingly hospitable. So that's interesting. It has the most Earth-like atmosphere out of any planet we have. We do have a lot of gas planets in our solar system, uh, but in comparison to Mars, it's better. I just think this whole idea, I'm going to pull up the photos and the renderings of Elon Musk's plan by 2050. It does seem a little bit crazy and out there, but it, it, I mean, we're talking about around 25 years, 26 years from now, actually 27. If we're, We might as well just do the math, 2023 20, to 2050, that's about 27 years from now. It does seem very far out there. It seems ext extremely tough to get a million people on Mars, but at a certain point, there have been a few missions that People might be going, human beings might be stepping foot on Mars by 2030, so we will have to see if that ends up happening. But what a weird pivot this is, right? The co-founder of OceanGate, the entire thing gets blown to smithereens, figuratively and literally, and now he says, no, I'm focusing on building a cloud base in the Venus uh, atmosphere, and it is livable, and there have been other people, including NASA, that admits, yeah, it's something out there. It's a, it's a possible strategy for human beings to go to other planets. I'm not going to say it's a waste of time. I mean, it, it certainly would be cool to see, but, you know, it seems like the very obvious choice for humanity is Mars, which is right next to us, and we can actually go on its surface. Now, it is uh, extremely hot on Mars during the days and very cold at nights, but it's nothing like Venus to where it's so extreme Based on how close it is to the sun, it would melt us alive within a nanosecond. So guys, that is what the OceanGate uh, co-founder has come out and said. That's his next venture. He wants to build some type of base in the atmosphere of Venus. Doesn't seem very plausible. Seems like Elon Musk's strategy is a lot more realistic. But then again, who knows? I mean, we're so early into space exploration. We go to the moon back in the 60s, 70s. We haven't been back since. It's almost like humanity is rookies at this. And we're just getting introduced the 2020s, we're just learning. We're going to take our first steps on Mars possibly, you know, five or six years from now. And then we really rev it up. And then in 2050 and 2060, the second space race really kicks off and everyone starts investing billions of dollars into space. And that's when we start talking about it. And I think this needs to be looked into if you're the United, if you're the United States. If you want to have renewable energy, what about putting solar panels in space and having them orbit the earth and you get 100%. Think about the problem with solar panels, right? Even if you put them in the most advantageous spot imaginable, which is actually in Chile, even if you put them there, they still don't work 100% of the time because it's going to be night at a certain point. And then you say, well, what about in Alaska? Sometimes it's daylight for 24 hours. Yeah, the problem with Alaska, it's very cloudy. And also, yes, you will get days where it's bright out the full 24 hours, but you'll also get days where it's what dark out the entire time. So you can't put solar panels in Alaska. That doesn't work. The idea is if you put them orbiting the Earth and you can somehow transfer that energy back to the United States Oh my God, we would laugh ever. Imagine we had that technology. And, and think about it. The solar panels are closer to the sun, so they're getting even more energy faster, and it's 100% of the time. Every second of every day, the solar panels are exposed to massive amounts of energy from the sun. That's probably coming in 2040 or 2050. But we'll see what happens with all of this and the whole Venus plan, the the, the uh, cloud base and things like that. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that is always in the description.